Hey everybody, this is Philip and Brandon from Zade Comics, the co-creators and of uh, Magic Cop that's coming out in August on Indiegogo, and just the two best looking brothers in all of comics. And today we're doing a car pulling video in the Dodge Viper, going out to lunch, and we wanted to talk about some uh, TV news. The new Batwoman trailer came out this week, and I think the end of last week, the new uh, Krypton season trailer came out with a look at Lobo, who they're putting in to the show. So I think we'll talk about Lobo first. Now, I watched the first season of Krypton. It's on sci-fi. It's about uh, Superman's um, great-grandfather. Adam Strange goes back in time to save him and change the future so Superman could kill Doomsday in the future. Uh, and then he's got like the cape and it's disintegrating along the way. Um, so I, the only reason I watched it is because I heard that Lobo was going to be in season two. Uh, the show was a little too dramatic and not enough action for me, but it was enjoyable. Brainiac was pretty cool in it. Adam Strange was cool, the time traveler using the Zeta Beam to go back in time. And the reveal of Zod being in the show was, was kind of cool too. So they had this trailer that was showing, you know, Doomsday and all the other characters, and then it got to Lobo. Now when they showed Lobo a few months ago, uh, a lot of people weren't happy because he, he didn't look like Lobo. The, the actor who, uh, He's not in, like super muscular and really tall. He doesn't look beefy and threatening like Lobo does in the comics. But they got the skin tone right and the hair. They gave him the, the dreads. Uh, but once he opened his mouth in this trailer, I was out because they gave him like an Irish or British accent. It was not good. They just did... They, they're like, oh, we can't get him to look like Lobo, how we want to look? Let's just give up. And there's so many forms of media where you can reference Lobo's voice, even though he comes directly from comics and you have no reference for that. But over the, you know, 15, 20 years of Lobo being in other media, on the Superman animated TV show where uh, Brad Garrett did his voice, it was perfect. He also did it in the Justice League show. And then more recently, um, he was in Justice League Action, where they gave him kind of a Macho Man Randy Savage voice. <laughs> but in all the iterations, it's this big, burly voice that reflects how he looks. Uh, also, yeah. Lobo's from space. Right, yeah, Lobo's from space. So he's not from England. So he doesn't have a reference of the, the British or Irish accent. Right, so he has to have a neutral accent, and since it's an American product, Right. would have an American accent. Right. right? Yeah, and they, they, it, it, he was in Young Justice. He's in the, I think, season two, and he's in the newest season. Um, and in both seasons, he speaks in an alien dialect, and then when he comes to Earth, he has a translator on his belt that translates his voice into English, and he, look, he sounds like Lobo, which is really cool. Well, then in the show, maybe they'll be like, oh, it's the language is English, he must have an English accent. Maybe, because everyone on Krypton does have an English accent for some reason. Well, yeah. That makes uh, sense. So perhaps, perhaps he's doing that. Um, but yeah, in the comics, Lobo is super smart, and he, um, he knows a bunch of different languages, like over 10,000 languages in, in the, the galaxy. Well, I don't know if I'll watch it. I probably won't have time to watch it. Maybe I'll just look up the episodes with Lobo in it. Um, but I wasn't happy about that. It was like, what, with with Young Justice you wanted to see Lobo, right? Yeah, yeah, I skipped that. to that. And that episode was pretty good. He kicked everyone's butt. That was cool. But on to Batwoman. So, uh, so yeah, the Batwoman trailer came out. I saw the Elseworlds episode for the CW crossover that Batwoman was in. And she was pretty cool. Um... But in this trailer, it was very interesting because there was a lot of stuff I liked about it. 
A lot of stuff I didn't like about it. Main thing that I really liked was the villain. She was like a female Mad Hatter chick. That was cool. That was really cool. She's got white hair, which I love white hair. And she, you know, was doing the, the Lewis Carroll stuff from the Alice in Wonderland books. Maybe it's not Mad Hatter. Maybe she's got like a different name or something. But she was really cool. She smacks Ruby Rose in the face with like a cricket bat. And we're like, man, no one's going to survive that yeah, Both of us were like, she's dead. Yeah, she's definitely <laughs> dead. But maybe uh, she could take that. Um, Obviously. I know this is the, the beginning of her story, so we have to see her without the suit, which I'm not really interested in seeing her fighting people without the suit. The fighting didn't look great, but um, she does get the suit, and it is an Elseworlds thing, so in this world, Bruce Wayne is gone, and she's like Bruce Wayne's cousin. She breaks into the Batcave, and she gets the bat suit, which at first you have to see her fighting like in the bat man suit where it has full cowl and that was weird because that woman's all about you know having her her iconic thing is her red blinding hair which is awesome and you do see that at the end of the trailer which i like um but what i didn't like is the you know i'm better than a man aspect of the trailer i know a lot of people have problems with that and I actually posted in one of my groups this awesome video by Kyung Lee who's talking about why women can't be feminine in superhero products anymore uh, so definitely look at that what was your opinion of the trailer I think aesthetically visually it's really nice looking um, I think the costumes are really cool like I I feel you with the hair yeah but I know why they did that and I understand the narrative that they're trying to push so I get that yeah you know it's cool that they're gonna do the hair I know they're gonna use it as a tool of like well you're gonna have to look like a woman if you want to not be associated with Batman like I get that and which is whatever you know it's part of their narrative that's fine but the costume design is really cool it seems like the lighting and the uh, the set design and everything is gonna look really cool uh, you know, Ruby Rose, she's been in a lot of action stuff and she she shows that she can do the choreography and be a badass chick and that's awesome. Yeah, she, and John Wick too, she was really cool. I feel like she's a little thin. Yeah, she looks you know, thinner than ever in this. Uh, which hopefully she bulks up a little bit so that she does look a little bit more like, uh, like a fighting machine. Yeah. If that's what she's going for. Because like... In one of the Batman movies, I guess it was Batman vs Superman. Like you see Ben Affleck's Batman go from like you know being a you know a guy who's in good shape, and then like all of a sudden he's jacked out of his mind. <laughs> and you need that if you're going to be a superhero, obviously. Yeah, I, especially if you don't have superpowers. So I think it's going to look really nice visually as long as they don't. Hopefully, they'll learn their lesson pretty early with the. Uh, the cultural narrative that they're going to try and push yeah. because I think that's going to really really bring down the value of the you know of the story like people I don't know yeah and I think uh, with that character specifically she's a lesbian just having that you get that naturally right you and get that organic. yeah she's powerful woman lesbian. badass um, you get it naturally and you don't have to force it into there. But I know what they're, you know, they're trying to get the, the points and the applause for that trailer. So hopefully that's only, you know, they don't force it down throughout the whole series. Because it looks cool. The character's really cool. They're, I, I assume they're having Renee Montoya in there, the female cop that she's in love with. She could spin off to do a female question show because she does eventually turn into the question. Yeah. So she could, that would be cool. For a couple um, seasons from now, they'll probably do that. Yeah, and yeah, her hair is so iconic. I'm glad they do switch it up, but I think the journey getting there, her being like the suit is only perfect if it could fit a woman and stuff like that. I think it's slapping and a lot in the trailer. She's backhanding Batman for like, oh, I'm not gonna let Batman take credit for what I'm doing. But it's like, you know, no one knows who you are. You're in a bat suit. <laughs> How are they supposed to know? Right. So make the Why change. So she does. Not be Batwoman. Why not be yeah. any other animal any, woman? Any character. If you don't want to be associated with Batman, but we'll have to see what they do. Hopefully, they they steer clear of that in the actual show. You know, because sometimes they'll use that as their 
selling point, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll see. But yeah, I think enough people liked her in the other show. I mean, she has a series now, so that's cool. But yeah, so if you guys like this video and have any opinions on these trailers, leave a comment down there, hit the like button, and subscribe. Um, we are are putting up our free comic. It's on our website, zadecomics.com. So sign up for that mailing list. Read the free comic. Let us know what you think. And we put out updates all the time. And thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.